Off and welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Crystal Paco. So glad you could join us. A Korean couple has filed suit against Premier Ken Guam LP. The litigation follows the tragic death of their daughter, who drowned in the Hilton Guam Resort and Spa pool. Here's more. Couple Jun Seok Jang and Soo Jin Han came to Guam back in August 2017 for a family vacation. That fun ended abruptly when their daughter, Myung Wan, drowned in the hotel swimming pool. The family, back in January, filed a wrongful death suit against Premier Ken Guam LP, doing business on Guam as Hilton Resort and Spa. Mom and Dad alleged the Tumon Hotel negligently managed, operated and maintained and controlled their swimming pool, and that the pool was negligently and wrongfully designed, constructed, maintained, operated, and supervised. Their five-year-old daughter, they report, experienced trauma, pain, and suffering prior to her death. Mom and Dad, court documents state, also report suffering from extreme emotion and psychological injury, as well as incurred medical expenses. While the story has made Korean headlines, not so much on Guam. Currently at issue, defense is calling out the couple for editing the surveillance footage of the ordeal, which was posted on a Korean website. PKG court documents state alleged the couple knowingly used the video to inflame the public and that they, quote, cut and spliced that video into a misleading clip and then surrounded it with inflammatory false statements, end quote. PKG wants to keep the video out and that it will, quote, not add any value from the perspective of water safety, end quote. Plaintiffs argue otherwise, stating, quote, the video itself is immensely newsworthy. Water safety is something you can never pay enough attention to. Guam is a tourist destination for all the world. The world has a right and need to know as much about this case as possible. Of course, there is going to be a divergence of opinion as to the characterization of the events which took place. But that characterization should be protected. As no two people even completely agree on a car crash, they both witness from the same vantage point. Courts should not deprive the public of one side's view of events. However, here we have a video showing an event of immense public interest to the lives of persons throughout this part of the globe, whether they are potential tourists or just people planning to take a swim, end quote. The couple further argues there's little likelihood that a Guam juror would have been exposed to the Korean website in question, proving they're making no effort to affect a Guam jury. A return hearing is set for October 10th. While majority of island residents weather Typhoon Mankut very, fairly well, the same can't be said for some of our furry friends. Visiting veterinarians who were here on island that initially conduct a spay and neuter clinic lended a helping hand to Guam's animals in need. Carmen Terlahi reports. You can say it was a rough night for Rogue. She found him on back road yesterday, just unable to move, completely lethargic and very skinny. A neighbor that grew attached brought him in from Jigo to Gaines Free Clinic just days after Typhoon Moncoot. Probably exhausted himself running around and hiding. Um, who knows? Um, I'm just glad he's here. We can help him. But Samantha Mullen of Vet Tech at Guam Animals in Need says he's not the only stormtrooper. A lot of dogs have been displaced because of the typhoon. Um, you know, they hear a loud noise, a strong gust of wind, and they just bolt. Vets spotted furry pets walking along the roads after the typhoon, some even hit by cars. Mullins suggests spaying and neutering to decrease the amount of abandoned dogs and cats on Guam. There are too many people on Guam with more than five animals in their care. Some have 30 to 60 animals that they're caring for. And without spaying and neutering, those animals just keep multiplying. Overall, Gain hopes all animals are cared for and is glad the stranger that found Rogue is giving him a loving home. Love your animals. Keep them safe. If there's ever a storm, bring them inside. Keep them dry. We're just doing everything we can to give him some food, get him some fluids, assess um, his condition, and make him better. And she's going to take him home and nurse him back to health, and she's going to name him Rogue. Reporting for Guam Seas Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Turlahi.
Not a single working elevator was available at the Guam Memorial Hospital the night of the typhoon. Heavy rain from Typhoon Mengkut le leaked from the roof, showering water into the elevators. This forced the hospital to cancel all visitors. They also had to resort to unusual measures for any internal movements, especially for wheelchair patients. Here's Administrator Peter John Camacho. Operationally, we have uh, procedures in place for staff to be able to move patients from, like, let's say, uh, one unit to another, from one floor to another. So that, and it's, but it's, it's labor intensive, and they would, and they would have to go in to, up through the stairwell, because that would be our only uh, method of, of, you know, moving up and down in the in the facility. The badly leaking roof was a major deficiency that has been cited previously by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. Camacho says GMH has asked the legislature repeatedly for money to fix it, and he says it simply needs to get done. In fact, today we got a, a request for information from CMS asking on the status of the hospital and, you know, any impacts, and so we were sharing all of that stuff with them. What did you tell CMS? We told CMS that we had a lot of water coming in and uh, the elevators were down and so they're going to be looking at, you know, to make sure that what did we do since that time to try to address those issues. The CMS program provides millions of dollars a year in federal funding for GMH patient care. Slowly but surely our power is coming back on and our fridges are getting cold, but that doesn't mean our food is safe to eat. As Carmen Terlahi reports, here's some safety tips for post-typhoon food. Spam, corned beef hash, and itchy ban are just a few of island typhoon favorites. Now as the power comes back on and our refrigerators refreeze, Chef Cotwell Singh has some tips for eating safe. This typhoon, there's no power limited uh, source of water and of course the, maybe the gas so the tips is choose choose what you can cook and what you can consume his advice stay away from leftovers don't keep because if we keep germs bacteria disease maybe grow on the food right so everything you cook cook fresh cook a little bit in fact, public health also has some safety tips like throwing out the following foods. Non-perishables like milk or eggs in your fridge when the power was out for four hours or more. Food with unusual odor in cardboard containers. Wooden cutting boards or baby bottle pacifiers that came in contact with flood water. Overall, remember, when in doubt, throw it out. Chef says you might want to take your family to a restaurant where staff work hard to make sure their food is fresh. Place are open, go get some food, maybe a little bit expensive, it's okay to pay, uh, but don't get a lot that you throw. We always uh, open, yes, uh, um, of course, we have generator, we have power, we have water. In general, Chef Singh says many prepared eating non-perishables in their fridge like ice cream before it goes bad. So far, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel uh, chatan, pong songwa, paka, those, I, I've been here. Um, those were the hard one, uh, difficult, we was not prepared. So this time we was prepared and employee was prepared, so that's good. Reporting for Glossy's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilahi. Speaking of Chef Singh, his post-typhoon plans included donating more than two dozen of his cookbooks with some, some more to come to students at the Guam Community College. These books are all about culinary creations from all over the world. This is his way, he says, to encourage the cream of the crop among Guam's culinary students. Now for this month's Good Neighbor segment featuring a Good Samaritan in our community and, their, and highlighting their everyday acts of selflessness. This month we feature a cop who went above and beyond the call of duty at the height of Typhoon Mankut. We aired the story earlier this week in Primetime Edition and it was well worthy enough of an encore presentation. Here's more on Guam Police Officer Angelo Bueno. The Good Neighbor, presented by Title Guarantee, Guam's first, oldest, and most experienced title and escrow company. Typhoon Munghut has hit the Marianos. Some even going outside to test the strength of the storm. But the strong winds and heavy rain is no joke. Come on, move here. More than 300 people made their way to Ukudu High seeking shelter. 
Guam police officer Angelo Bueno working the front door. Just, just stay here. I'll go help your husband. Our cameras even captured Officer Bueno doing the unexpected. You're going to carry whatever's left, okay? Yeah. We had a situation where a female came in late with the, at the peak of the storm where it was getting pretty windy and had three, four kids in the car with the husband. Over here, Come. Bueno walked outside multiple times, braving the heavy winds. I just want to make sure that her family were together, that they're not stuck out there. Bringing the kids in, I had to keep them away from the direction of the rain so that it doesn't hit their face. I was using my back as a shield to bring them in. This officer going above and beyond the badge to get Francine Cruz's family safely inside. They were forced to head to the shelter after the winds caused damage to their home. My dad's room actually, his, it was leaking in and it was, cave, you know, the top part was caving in. So we just left. She, along with the dozens inside this shelter, braced for the storm's closest approach. The sound of the wind and rain coming from outside, just one of the many things people had to deal with overnight, including the spot outages. This school here at Ukudu High being on emergency power, and you can see the conditions here, many just uh, waiting it out, going to sleep, and trying to get comfortable as we wait out the storm. I feel safe, safe right now, I'm scared at the same time, you know, nervous the first time. During the chaos, many also showing gratitude for the help being given, like Francine sharing this for Officer Bueno. I thank him for bringing my kids in, actually, because the wind was very strong as I was coming in. I was like, I, was, I felt like I was going to fly away with the bags. Yeah. And he's a hero. Thank you so much. It comes with a job, you know, GPD, GFD, we always respond where the hazard's at. A job that Officer Bueno is all too familiar with to ensure his community is safe during and after the storm. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Wahusi Nick Delgado. The Good Neighbor, presented by Title Guarantee, Guam's first, oldest, and most experienced title and escrow company. As this month's Good Neighbor recipient, Title Guarantee will donate $100 to Officer Bueno's charity of choice. He picked the Victims Advocates Reaching Out. Vero's mission is to provide services to victims and families of domestic violence, sexual assault, abuse, violent crime, and traumatic events. They also provide outreach and education on those same issues. You can visit KUAM News' website or app and let us know who else is deserving of this award and why. A winner will be selected every month, and like I said, Title Guarantee will also reward the monthly Good Neighbor winner a cash prize to go towards their local charity of choice. Stay tuned more when Weekend Edition re returns. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. When we face an uncertain path. When we struggle with life's challenges. And when the unexpected happens. It's a beautiful day. We rely on the people we trust. Oh, oh, oh. It's a beautiful Who we can always count on. It's a beautiful day. and to the ones who give us the most care throughout the years. Rely on Calvo's Select Care to give you the comfort and security you need it's a beautiful day. wherever you are. Calvo's Select Care, health care that's always there for you. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. 
Half a day, hungry drivers. Are you spending more time on the road? Shell has teamed up with Wendy's so you can buy fuel and eat free. Just fuel up seven gallons at any Shell station and get a coupon for a Wendy's cheeseburger or chicken nuggets. Or use two coupons to redeem a Wendy's cheeseburger meal with fries and a drink. Fuel up at Shell today because this deal won't last long. Quality service, fuel and food from Shell and Wendy's. Half a day and welcome back. Many headlines covered this week caught your eye either on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Now time to take a look at what you had to say. Asha Ro Robles has more. Hey everyone, I'm Asha Robles and here's what happened this week on Trend Spotting. The aftermath of Typhoon Mankuk had most of the island overwhelmed. Power outages, island-wide, flooding, destruction, and even total loss of property to a few of our neighbors, and government officials working around the clock to get our island back to normal. Without power, everyone turned to social media, not only for updates that our awesome news team provided hourly, but also by posting their experiences online. Some decided to make light of the imperfect situation. An account on Instagram named Typhoon Menghut quickly gained attention by posting videos that went viral around the island. One video that blew up was of a man who used a couple of political signs that were posted outside of his house to board up his windows. Here's how some reacted to this video. One person said, 2000 IQ nigh. Another one said, hey, don't let the wood go to waste. One video that had everyone at KUAM laughing was that of our very own Jason Salas. Another Instagram account named Made on Guam reposted a live video that we had taken right before Typhoon Manghut hit. Jason was giving our viewers some information while walking backwards and accidentally walked right into a closed door. The hit wasn't crucial, but some of the comments definitely were, to him anyway. Some comments teased that alcohol was involved, others put thumbs down, and some simply commented, fail. Don't worry, Jason, we still think you're awesome. And as if the police didn't already have enough on their plate responding to the aftermath of Typhoon Manghut, multiple reports of violence caught on camera had them juggling between post-Typhoon recovery efforts and responding to calls. One of the alarming videos that had spread like wildfire throughout the week was taken by an officer with the Navy security forces. The situation led to at least four people being placed under arrest. 19-year-old Jared Resselap and 25-year-old Frankie Rufus were charged with aggravated assault, terrorizing, criminal mischief, disorderly conduct, public drunkenness, and more. Police also confirmed the arrest of 19-year-old Emmanuel Resselap and a 16-year-old boy for their alleged part in the crime. Here's how some of our viewers reacted. Christine Villacorta said on Facebook, the parents of the minor should be charged and held accountable for the minor. And Denise Legaspi says, make the parents held responsible for the kids. Lastly, you all know Anuheya. She'll be performing on Island at the Guam Museum on Sunday, September 23rd at CoreFest. Entry to this event is invite only and exclusive to patrons 21 years and over. Don't worry, we got some tickets to be given away. Try your luck by checking out our social media platforms for all the rules and regulations on how you can enter to win two tickets for this private event. For now, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Asha. Crime Stoppers is next with Jason Salas. If you get nervous about having dental treatment, you're not alone. An estimated 35 million adults experience anxiety or nervousness at the simple thought of visiting the dentist. As your dentist, I strive to make your visit as painless or pain-free as possible. And I frequently tell my patients that in the 21st century, if we can give you medicines to put your tooth asleep or medicines to take an infection or toothache away, we can surely give you something to help relax you and take all fear away. No one ought to sit in a dental chair thinking of bad childhood memories or fearing injections. If you're a dental coward, but you really do want your teeth fixed, don't wait until the pain is killing you. Come in, tell us your fears, and set up an appointment. We have convinced many that dental treatment doesn't need to be scary anymore. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. You shall never know all the good a simple smile can do.
Safa Day, everybody. Domestic violence cases are some of the most heinous type of crimes in our community where family is always a core part of how we live as Islanders. Sergeant Paul Tapal with GPD is here. And Sarge, we're going to talk about what victims of crimes as well as their families can do because there's a, there's a lot of resources that mm -hmm. exist right now on the island where people can go for help, uh, they can seek treatment, but also they can hopefully bring closure to their case, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when, you, when we talk about domestic violence cases, this is usually what we classify as a closed door crime. It's being, you know, pretty much committed uh, within the confines of a home and everything. And it's really hard for us to infiltrate without a victim or, or a survivor coming forward and reporting. And that's the hardest thing to do is if you're a victim of domestic violence, is actually coming forward, empowering yourself to come forward. So really, we're asking the community to take note of your family members who you may suspect to be a victim of a domestic violence uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the core, the core point right there, because if somebody feels like they may or may not be a victim, but they just don't know, mm -hmm. right? They're like, okay, well, I get in spats with my significant other, you know, we yell at each other yeah. occasionally, you know, those kind of things happen. But how do they know, like, where is the line drawn in when it becomes a domestic violence case? So you can really tell from the onset when it becomes power and control. Um, when the aggressor wants to always have that power and control, always controlling um, the victim's um, movements, their location, where they're at, who they're meeting with, what they do. Being, being very possessive, yes, being very jealous. Yes, that, that's, that is the definite telltale signs to look for. And that's the precursor for the onslaught of, of different things to come because right after you determine that the power and control, now what that does, it triggers an emotional um, abuse because of the fact that um, the aggressor has that power and control over the victim. And where it continues, where the cycle will continue from um, you know, the, the psychological approach to now it becomes aggressive and everything physical in nature. And that's where it becomes very, very dangerous for not just the victim, but all the family members under the care of the victim and the abuser, because it becomes a cycle that we try to identify and we try to break, but it starts with identifying power and control. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, everybody's going to say, I know I need to call 911 and I know GPD can help me, but how much do your brothers and sisters in the police department get involved with like those kind of cases? Or again, there are a mm -hmm. lot of different agencies, there are nonprofit organizations that are specialized in this kind of thing. Do you guys kind of like transition people to those or do you yes. work the whole case? Absolutely, I'm glad you brought that up because the Guam Police Department will be your first responders out there. Now the beautiful thing about it is that our patrol officers uh, through training and everything is that we have uh, empathetic briefings on how, to, how do you handle domestic violence. But we also take it up a notch because now we have our domestic assault response team now, as line with our domestic response officers, we have advocates who work closely with them. But our domestic assault, uh, assault response members or detectives within that area, they're also advocates. So they know how to pr uh, provide that triage of care that's needed for the emotional support and everything, mm -hmm. while in line bringing justice for the victim by arresting the perpetrator or the aggressor. And we also work clo uh, closely with non uh, nonprofit organizations and non-government organizations such as VARO to assist us when, in handling triage and care for the victims. Okay, well, let's get to our crime of the week real quick. And when we come back, I want to talk about like giving victims the ability to actually step forward. So what do we got this week? Uh, this week is a robbery that happened in Machinal Dededo. Okay, here's what you can do to help our friends up north. On Wednesday, September 5th, shortly before 4.30 p.m., officers from the Dedodo Precinct Command responded to Machinal Dedodo in reference to a robbery complaint. Now, the preliminary investigation suggests that the victim was traveling on Challenge Chihub and slowed to execute a turn onto Challenge Margarita. As the victim was making the turn, he noticed a couple walking along the road in which the man, only described to be local, heavy set, standing around 5 foot 6 with blonde hair and was seen wearing a red shirt with gray shorts, began punching the victim's face. The victim was then pulled out from his vehicle as both the male suspect and the female individual, only described as being possibly local, entered the car and drove away. The vehicle was described to be a white Scion TC bearing WAM license plates, Mike Alpha India 9097, that's MAI 9097. Now the Guam Crime Stoppers and the Guam Police Department is reaching out to the community relative to this case. If anyone has any information about this crime or any other crime, you can call our 24-hour hotline at 477-HELP, that's 4357, or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppers.com. Web.com. All calls will remain completely confidential and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. All right, Sarge, we appreciate that with the information. We always want to take care of everybody up in Dedido. Um, now, as I said, 
what words of wisdom would you pass to people that may feel they're like, you know, I know I'm being victimized or, you know, I know these things are happening, but I'm afraid to speak up or I, I don't know because, you know, at the end of the day, GPD can come here and they can say, you know, you need to stop this, but I'm still going to come home to this household and now the person's going to have, you know, even more aggression I'm, and, you know, they're, they're going to be really, really upset. And then that, that's the whole thing behind power and control is that now we want to do is what we want to really instill in the victims is that we want to empower them to take that stand. It's, it's a big leap of faith and everything, but we're asking family, and mem family members from the outside to support in. If you see signs of telltale signs, start a dialogue, start a communication line, and ask them, is everything okay? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you may get some resentment and everything because nobody really likes to pry into people's lives, but it really starts with you opening that, that, that in, in, intimate dialogue between you and a family member. So start with establishing a dialogue Start with empowering yourself about what you can do because really you want to break that cycle and it starts with the victim empowering themselves into understanding that there's help out there, there's resources, there's family members that can provide that triage of care uh, in dealing with domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And you said GPD does have a special team that is, mm -hmm. you know, highly equipped to handle this. If people would like to call and just say, you know, I, I would like to come forward or anything like that, how can they get in touch with Give you? Give us a call. Call our dispatchers and we can connect you to the right people. Start by calling 472-8911. Talk to our dispatchers, you know, ask them who you can speak to and stuff. Ask them you want to speak to the domestic assault response team and they can lead you the way. But it starts with you empowering yourself, wanting to bring changes to that relationship. All right, Sarge, thanks so much for taking care of everybody on Guam. Thanks for having us. All right. Please stay tuned, everyone. We're back after this. Visitors make memories on our island. They contribute millions of dollars every year to our community. So what does that mean? Tourism keeps our island's culture alive. And it strengthens our identity as Chamoru. Tourism creates opportunities for local businesses to thrive. The dishes I create feature local ingredients. These ingredients come from local farms and create local jobs for farmers like us. For every job we see in tourism, there are hundreds more we don't see. From teachers, to babysitters, to engineers. We, we all, all work, work in the tourism industry. Our visitor industry benefits everyone. It improves our income and gives back to our community. We need more opportunities for a better Guam. Tourism works for Guam. Attention drivers, we have a shipload of vehicles on the way and need to make room. Buy now during Triple J's shipload sale. Take advantage of our best pricing on all Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazdas, Lincolns, Volvos, Kias, and used cars. New cars as low as $137 per paycheck and used cars as low as $86 per paycheck during Triple J's shipload sale. See PDN and post print ads for details or visit us online at TripleJGuam.com and get pre-approved instantly. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. Triple J Auto Group. Customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, here's our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Lots of people celebrating their birthday this weekend. That's right. Happy birthday to you, Maria Kitty Mesa. Happy 65th birthday. Blessings, Mama. We love you. Your kids, grand, and of course, your great grand. And a very happy blessed birthday wishes and lots of love to Elijah Paris Villa Gomez from Mima, Marianne. Grandpa, Frank Villa Gomez, and Munoz family, Jesus Maasi, happy, happy birthday. And a happy birthday to Kelly Santos, to our daughter. You are such an amazing person. We wish you a day full of blessings, good health, and abundance of happiness. Enjoy your birthday and every day to the fullest. We love you, your mom and dad. And a happy, happy birthday this Sunday to Dashton Leon Guerrero. Happy birthday to you, Tobias Leon Guerrero. And finally, last, but not least, happy birthday, Kaiani Kim Sablon Menno. Happy fifth birthday. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include your photo, your name, and birth dates. We can celebrate you. That's all the time we have from all of us here at Guam's News Network. Thanks for watching and have a safe weekend. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E.
Buffet. I'm Chef Peter Duenas of Mescla Restaurants, and you're watching Food Obsession.